Now, my next guest is a former model turned YouTuber and writer who is lifting the lid on her days as an international fashion model. In her first book, How Not to Be a Supermodel. And Ruth Crilly joins me now. Good morning to you. Good morning. I can't oh, believe I'm here. Oh, it's lovely to have you in. I mean, you have millions of people watching you on YouTube, don't you? Yeah. And in fact, that is a turning point because you decided to turn your back on modelling because you'd basically had enough, hadn't you, at one point. But in the book, you talk about some brilliant revelations about kind of what it actually is like because we think it's hugely glamorous and very lucrative, which, of course, it is both of those things. Tell us a bit about the story with your mum, for example. Your mum was a teacher. <laughs> She's going to be loving this. Yeah. She's going to think, oh, not this story again. Not this story. And you ended up on the front pages of the newspapers wearing practically nothing. I did a very high-profile shoot with David LaChapelle, who's a huge photographer, and it was for Patrick Cox Shoes. And um, my agent said, it's going to be the, the job that will change your life, change your career. And I was like, OK, I'll do it. She was like, you're going to be naked, but it's all right. It's only from the side. No one will see a thing. And then I sort of forgot about it in a way because it took so long between a shoot and actually it coming out. And my mum said, um, yes, you do happen to just be on the front page of a couple of newspapers, completely naked, straddling sofa doll. So that was probably a bit of a shocker. And she but... was in the staff room at work, was she, when she saw it? Is that true? Uh, I think it's actually worse than that, but I can't... <laughs> I can't I'm not allowed to tell her that. Because she's going to be watching. She's going to be sick to death of this story. Um, she's very... She's, she's good. She's cool. She's very open-minded. And, and uh, it, it, it was only bad for about five years, and then it's For fine. about five years, <laughs> yeah, fine. But we're, then... we're speaking now, it's fine. But it's fine. And also interesting, you tell another story about how it impacted your relationship with your boyfriend at the time. Because after an instant where, I, understandably, he became quite insecure and jealous of basically what you were doing. <laughs> it was the one time, and I don't think he's ever been jealous of anything since, no. but I was doing a shoot with Jude Law. Yeah. And I was, I think it was for his movie Alfie, and I was in lingerie with another girl, and we had to sort of drape ourselves over him. There's a lot of draping and straddling There's going on in this industry. draping and straddling, yeah. And um, I just did it... I had it picked up on the signs because I was so excited to be going to this shoot. Yeah. And, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't doing well with it. But it was totally out of character. He's not like that at all. Yeah. And a photographer... And we're married now. Good. Together for That's a good news story. 20, 21 years, I think, we've been <laughs> together. Um, and so, as a photographer, you sort of took it for granted that you were all in the industry and everyone knew what was going on. And I think it was because he knew what did go on that he, yeah. was, he was worried. And it's interesting because, you know, you talk about, I mean, the fact that you obviously were doing this career, but even in those rooms, you were being told that you, you were too big on top, that your boobs were too big. And it's very corrosive, actually, in many ways. Yeah, I think, I think though, in that time, it, it, was all, it was expected because everybody knew that models had to be a certain physical way. It's not like Maybe now when you have... five foot eight and eight stone or something, weren't you? I mean, you were very yeah, thin and very tall. Five foot ten was probably the ideal. And I don't think that you could be thin enough for some oh. markets. I mean, if you went to Paris or Milan and you were doing shows, you, I mean, girls were so, so thin that, um, you know, I was just slightly more buxom and... And you say it's remarkable that you didn't end up with a kind of eating disorder. Yeah. But you sort of I, managed somehow to resist, but it feels like I mean, it's the almost... kind of thing that would, um, would t you know, could take you down that road, I think, because if you're const at that age, if you're constantly being told that you're not the right shape yeah. or not the right size, um, I think you have to be quite careful. Yeah. Um, and luckily, I... You know, I, I was quite... I was quite... It's not being sensible about it, but I think I was quite... Um, practical about my body and I was almost detached from it in a way. Mm. So I saw it more of as a tool of the trade. Wow. I, I learned to be quite detached from it. It's really But it still affects you. I yeah, think. it does affect you. And you've got a daughter, haven't you? Yeah, she's now. nine. She's nine. And two things. I mean, do you think that you would want her to go into the modelling industry today? Has it changed enough for you to feel that you would want your daughter to do it? I don't think it's the same job that I had 20 years ago. Um, I mean, my job was eight or nine castings a day. You had a big portfolio. You were traipsing around. It was really old school. And I think there was something quite innocent about that, in a way. Uh, whereas now, it's all digital and you send a little thing of yourself off. And I don't know. I don't think it's the same job. I think you, you, you've sort of 
got to let your kids get on with it, haven't you? So I would never say no, but it wouldn't be my... I mean, the same as probably how my mum felt for me. It's not the ideal that I had for you, but you let your kids go off and, and grow. And do you know what? If I hadn't had the experiences I had, of which many were absolutely brilliant, then I wouldn't be yeah. who I am. Yeah. So I can't begrudge it anything. No. I had some amazing times. And I mean, it's and a whole in the book. Out of it. Yeah, and a whole book out of it. And you've got such a quirky sense of humour, and Thank I love you. that. And it's, it's very lively, very colourful. Uh, so congratulations. Is this your first book? It's the first of, um, let's hope, many. First of many. Uh, Ruth's book, How Not To Be A Supermodel, is full of great revelations. A really good read, and it's out tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.